string search and a couple of algorithms, the Newth Morris Pratt algorithm and the Boyer Moore algorithm. So you're sitting on a web page and you're like, hey, I wonder if this web page has the word banana. So you go up to the search window, type banana, and it scans, <coughs> the computer scans through the entire web page and finds those characters if they are there. Okay, so that's that's the problem. Okay, we want to go ahead and search for, say, Ananab, uh, banana backwards inside a long string, like, and banana B or something like that. Um, in general, you have a search and we'll have a pattern that we're looking for and a big long string. Sometimes people call these the needle and the haystack. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to use a couple of notations. Let the size of the input, uh, we usually call it n, and that we'll let that be the size of the string that we're searching in, the, the number of characters on the web page. Um, but there's another input, which is the size of the pattern. We'll call that m. So there's two, two inputs to this, m and n. Uh, presumably, n is much, much, much bigger, okay? Uh, in fact, you might be searching for a word not just on a web page, but in the collected works of Shakespeare, or doing looking for a protein that's, you know, a few hundred bases long inside a genome that's, you know, millions of base pairs long. Um, okay, so, uh, and I'll, let me just note that why are we going to be talking about this algorithm? It's not that I want you to know this inside out, but there's a couple of neat ideas. And there are ideas that might come in handy in the future if you're given some other problem in big data. Um, and you're like, hey, we're, I have a sequence that I'm looking for, and here's a big sort of streaming input of data coming by, and we want to scan the sequence and look for um, you know, something that's maybe not a string match, but uh, a bunch of matches. You know, find if, I want to, if there's a sequence of numbers that are each close to the, the sequence here, find it in this big, huge, long stream of data coming in. Uh, that sort of thing. Okay, so uh, so again, uh, I'm going to go through these algorithms, but I'm not really concerned that you'll remember all the ins and outs, uh, but more some of the ideas. And there's some cute ideas in here that are fun too. Okay, um, in addition to M and M, M and N, I might use K to talk about the number of characters there are. So 26 letters, 26, or maybe 128 Latin one characters, or uh, Unicode, you know, several hundred thousand there. Um, okay, so uh, what's a naive al algorithm? And I'm going to sort of set this up because I'll be talking about the other algorithms using a similar notation here. But say I want to look for the pattern uh, Ananab inside the string and banana bee. Okay, and I'm going to keep track of what characters we've looked at in the pattern string. Uh, not so much as a humans, we can look at the whole thing. And I want to remind ourselves that a program tends to only look at one character at a time. So I'm going to keep track of that. So what do we do? We go ahead and uh, if we're looking for this uh, pattern here, we might say, hey, uh, let's look for a match, look for Ananab starting at index 0, starting at index 1 in the string, starting at index 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And just sort of scan that out. And that's a simple problem. Does this string occur at index 17 of that string or index i of the string? That would be a straightforward, that is a very straightforward problem to write. So, um, and if you, so, you know, you might say, hey, I'm going to go ahead here. I'm looking for Ananab. Um, and I'll look at the first character. Hey, yeah, that's a match. Okay. Uh, N, I'm looking for, or look at the, look the next character. Hey, it's an N that I see. So the scene line is always going to be exactly the characters of stir. I'm just emphasizing which ones I've actually looked at. Um, great, okay, look for the next one. Do I have a match to the next character? I'm looking for an A and I see it. Oh, I see a B. Rats. Okay, I couldn't find it starting at index zero. So let me go ahead and try again. And I'm going to shift my pattern over by one and now say, hey, look for it starting from index one. Uh, I'm looking for an A. What do I actually see? Oh, I see. it's an N that occurs there. So, yep, go ahead and shift over again. Hey, I'm looking for an A. Oh, but I see a B. Okay. Didn't find it at index 0, 1, or 2. Well, go ahead and shift over and look at, sorry, index 3. And I see a uh, copy from that very line way up there. Uh, yeah, I see an A. I see an N. I see an uh, A. I see an N. I see an A. I see an N. Ah, okay. Rats. I didn't find it in index 3. So, naively, what would we do? We'd shift over one more. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, um, hey, can't we do better? 
I kind of know that shifting over by one, you know, me as a human, I can intuit that shifting over by one is not right. I want to sort of say, hey, don't shift over. Uh, you found, you know, we, we, we did find just now anana followed by something we didn't like. Um, you know, and the an, we need to match up those ans. I could sort of say, hey, I want to shift over by several, not just by one in the naive algorithm. So that's what some of these clever algorithms will be dealing with. When can we shift over by more than one? Um, okay, if we think about this naive algorithm, I won't finish it out. Um, we would eventually find that it does start a couple letters over. We will eventually find that. What's the worst case running time in terms of n the number of characters in, in stir and m the length of the pattern? Um, there's an easy bound. Uh, gosh, go look at from index 0, we're going to look at up to m characters. Index 1, we're going to look at m characters. Index 2, we're going to look at m characters, and so on. Um, and uh, we have to do that for uh, roughly n starting characters, n minus m, something like that. Uh, so yeah, worst case running time is about n time, m times n. Um, and you can think about what particular inputs would evince that running time. Uh, best case, what would the best case be? The best case is uh, maybe there aren't any A's in the string. So we just look at the first, we look at index zero. No, nope, didn't match that A. Look at the next, start from index one, shift over, start from index one. No, nope, no A there, no A there, no A there, no A there. And finally, when we do find an A, maybe then we find our match or we hit the end of the string. Maybe it's not there at all. Um, that's kind of the, the best case for this algorithm. You've gone through and you've looked at every single character of the string once. That's theta of N, okay? So, um, and so the best case would be, yeah, the first letter doesn't occur in the input string at once, you'll find it with a scan. That seems like, gosh, looking at each character once, it's hard to get an answer without at least looking at each character once, right? Um, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, and it's actually easy to see that this best case in practice might occur a lot. Okay, if I'm looking for banana in a web page, there aren't that many Bs. When I do feel, see a B, it might be followed a B followed by an A, but a B followed by an A followed by some other letter. So it's unlikely, I'm not going to look at more than one letter very often as I scan through the web page. And when I do see a B, I'm not going to scan very far before I find a miss in real life. Well, at least in real life for web pages. Um, I'm not a biologist. If I'm looking for protein sequences, it might be, yeah, this protein might have 150 codons all in a row that really are do occur a lot in a genome and um, you also have to worry about I chose banana or ananap uh, probably because of that repeated a and those repeats are something you want to take into account so okay so best case uh, theta of n might be a very uh, reasonable approximation of the true best uh, true average case uh, or might not depending on the domain you're looking at the types of strings you happen to be working with Okay, um, but yeah, so we want to know how can we shift this pattern, this pat, how can we shift that ananab over um, multiple characters, uh, and ideally without having to scan through, if we have to scan through ananab to figure out how far to shift, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, through the pattern to see how far to shift, well, that's doing a lot of extra work for each shift, and I want to, again, I want to get down to not having to do that much. Okay, so to look at that, I'm going to go ahead and um, rephrase this idea of just scanning through to find a, a match at a certain location uh, in terms of a finite state machine just to give us a little mental model of a, one of the algorithms. Um, so you might remember finite state machines hopefully from your discrete math class. If not, maybe you'll sort of pick it up as we go through. I need to switch to my whiteboard cam. Let's go ahead. I need to edit this and add the extra video feed. So we're going to switch to the other feed in three, two, Okay, so um, I'm going to view this as being in a sequence of states. We're in a certain place. Uh, initially, we've seen nothing, and if we see an A, hey, we're going to go to this next state here. And if we see an N, we're going to transition to this next state here. Great. Um, so yeah, we'll go on and transition. Hopefully, if we find the string we're looking for, we'd reach all the way here, get to this state that would maybe a final state, uh, double circle. Um, of course, there. this is showing if the good things happen, but what happens if you're going along and you see a letter that's not there? Um, yeah, if you're going along, if you've seen an A, 
you've seen an N, and then you see a B right there, gosh, uh, in that case you would need to go back to the beginning. And so on a B, you follow this arrow. If you're sitting in this state and the next letter you see is a B, you follow that arrow. If the next letter you see is an A, you follow this arrow. Okay. Um, yeah, and if you're in the state here, and again, if you see an N, you'd go here, but if you see a B, you'd also go back here. Uh, of course, note that if you're sitting here and you see an A, um, yeah, that would be say you've seen an A and A, and then you see another A. Yeah, we're, we're off our pattern. We're not seeing Ananab, but you know, that A could be the beginning of the next Ananab. So we're going to go back here. We won't, On an A, we don't go back all the way to the beginning. We can go back to the state here. And it's probably good for me to label these states and think about what they mean. Um, this state here is if I've seen, just seen the letter A of Ananab. And if I reach here, I've seen an AN of Ananab. And so it's pretty clear this state here means I've already seen an ANA -A and I'm hoping to see no more. And you can finish this all the way out. Let me go ahead at least one more. If you can't read that on the screen, don't worry, it's pretty clear. Uh, I guess that's the very first state is if you've just seen the empty string. Um, we've seen nothing for Ananab so far. And this last one would be the, the actual target Ananab. I won't write that in, but okay. So, uh, and I guess I can, if I'm talking about finite state machines, I can specify that, hey, my initial state is here. So, okay. Um, and notice that here's the interesting thing. If you go through and you see, uh, and, and, uh, and then you get a mistake, which is what happened in our example. Um, you know, you might say, hey, I've seen an, and, uh, and I saw something that wasn't, I saw an N. But if I see an N, then I've seen, you know, an, and, and, which the an, and, hey, that's right here. That, that would actually be a good thing to see. So if I'm sitting here and I see uh, an N, I actually just go back to that, so rather than go forward one, go back one. So it's a difference of, of two, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, and can resume from here. And if you then see another A followed by a B, you'll be happy. You will have seen Ananab starting through the stream. So um, same idea as the shifting. The shifting corresponds to going back, not all the way to the beginning. Okay. Um, actually, I take that back. Going all the way to the beginning is like shifting all the way over. Um, so. Okay, um, going back here, of course, it's a shift of, shifting of two, I think, to the difference of two between going ahead and not. Okay, um, nice. This is the basis of the Newth Morris Pratt algorithm, except uh, the one thing to note here's what we could do we could go ahead and there's probably libraries that implement a, a finite state machine. You specify where your states are, what letters, what where to go on each particular letter. If you think about this table, a lot of the transitions are back to the beginning. There's an awful lot of them. A few of them are of, of interest, like this one here, N goes back here. That, that's, that's kind of interesting. A goes back not quite to the beginning, but you know, hey, if X were one of the possible letters, then yeah, gosh, you know, there'd be an X going back to the beginning. And a, in fact, every single state would have an X going back to the epsilon, um, to the initial state. Um, and so there's gonna be a lot of transitions and most of them are kind of boring. So Newth Morris Pratt said, you know, if we implement this as a finite state machine, we would need to keep track of, well, for every letter in our pattern, we have a state, that's pretty easy. Uh, but then, gosh, for, we have for every possible input letter, we have where to go, that's n times, or sorry, m times k, uh, which is not too bad. m is not gonna to be too big, k is probably not gonna to be too big if we're not using full Unicode. Um, so that might be feasible. But here's what uh, Newth, Morris, and Pratt, uh, probably hanging out at lunch, I don't know, um, came up with. Um, they pointed out that, uh, well, before I get there, let me just point out, uh, building this is, if you're going to go ahead and search for banana in the web page or Ananab in the web page, you have to do a pre-processing step. You have to build this transition table first, and then you can go ahead and keep track of where you are, or keep track of what, every time you look at a, a letter of the input, where to go to. So um, if you do this, if you keep this table, then uh, we've done much better. Our algorithms has, after you do the pre-processing work, we then go look through our main string, the web page or whatever, and just keep track of where we are. And we always advance one letter until we find it or reach the end of the input. So um, yeah, we've gotten down to 
uh, theta of n worst case after a little bit of pre-processing, theta of m pre-processing maybe. Um, okay, so uh, da, 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 da. so our total running time would be uh, theta of m plus n. Okay, so okay, uh, Newth Morris Pratt simply made a little observation here um, that. You know, for the table, rather than keeping track of every possible letter going out of tr transition, if you're going along and you, um, you know, we reach all the way here and then we reach the letter uh, B, any letter that's a miss, it's like, hey, here's what we'll do. Um, don't sort of say on an N we go back here and on an X we'll go all the way back to the beginning and on a Y we'll go back to the beginning and on an A we go back to here. Don't keep track of all that. We're simply saying, say, hey, if you miss, ignore the letter that causes the miss and just say, hey, right now, back up to the nearest backup place, which would be just this one here. And then go and look at that next letter, the um, one that caused the miss, okay? Um, and see if that's the one that uh, would do. So, uh, I'm sorry, I, I take it back. Uh, Ruth Morris Pratt says, hey, uh, if you get to Anna Na and then something else, well, you've seen we know that at least we've seen A and A, we can go back to, Ruth Morris Pratt says, go back to here, okay? We've seen an A and A, we know that we a, starting with this initial A is no good, but that starting with that, so A and A and A is not the beginning of a valid match. We know that we're about to see something wrong, um, but that A and A is still good. So for A and A, we'd go back here. So don't look at the next bad character or put it back on the input stream and go back to here and now look at that character, okay? so. What does this do? Uh, and by the way, from here you might sort of say, what do you do on a bad character? If you see A and A and then there's something wrong, well, that would bring you back to the A, I believe. Uh, that that A N can't be part of a valid match if A N A and a non N. So, but you do have an A sitting there. So yeah, if you have C A and A followed by a non N, go back here and then look at that next letter. Okay, and so on. Actually, I guess you could be smarter and realize. Well, anyway. Um, Okay, so this is giving us uh, a table where we only go back from any state when we see a fail, we just go back to one place, not a whole bunch of different possible places, just one place and then pick up again. And so that's New Morris Press. What does that do, this transition table, rather than needing, um, I think that's a woodpecker's. Every now and then, about once a day, rattles my house. But it doesn't make a big hole, anyway. Um, the whistling sound is my son discovering a penny whistle uh, from the thrift store. Okay, uh, where are we? Um, we have this uh, the sides of the transition table. If we had the whole finite state machine, we'd have um, m states and k transitions for each one, and m by k table. If we just say, hey, go back to one place, just for every single index, keep track of where to fall back to. And you can now represent this as basically an array of ints, an array of size of length of your pattern, an array of size m. Um, and so you get a very, your pre-processing step becomes pretty concisely represented. Constructing that table is easy and straightforward. Um, and now you can scan through in linear time. That is Newth Morris Pratt. Okay, I'm going to finish up uh, by simply saying, um, doo -doo -doo. finish up by simply saying, um, hey, I'm going to go ahead and call this a good prefix approach, the Snooth Morris Pratt. Uh, that is, I've, if I'm going along and I hit something, I have a good prefix so far, then I hit a bad letter. Well, I can figure out how far to back up. I'm sorry, this is the backup this too. Um, that was like in our, what we wanted to shift by in our hand example. Um, when we see this, we're like, hey, I need to back up two spaces, and you throw away that initial a n and then maybe pick up from there and back up two spaces. So going back to two states, corresponding to being able to shift my pattern over by two um, and by keeping the good part of the prefix. So we might call this a good prefix approach. Uh, that's not a standard term, but the a good suffix is mentioned in the next algorithm, Boyer Moore, which sort of uh, includes this as a substep. Okay, I'll see you in that video.